Hey folks, Robert from Marine Depot here, and I'm at the Concordia University Marine Lab to take all of you on a very special tour and check out some really awesome animals. Alright, so what are we looking at here, Sean? Alright, so this tank is uh, one of our sort of showcase tanks where we put some of our bigger species. Uh, right now we've got swimming around a, a swell shark and a horn shark, uh, both adults, uh, though not full size, so they could be a little bit larger. Um, and then these, these fish over here are called rock grass, another local uh, species. And there's a giant kelp fish that's hanging out sort of underneath our our camera here. This is our, a live stream camera that we have streaming onto our webpage. Some artificial uh, uh, algaes and seagrass, fucus, the, 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 the rockweed. You know, California for a long time we had that big problem with uh, Clerpa on the coast. I think there was like the Clerpa Action, California Clerpa Action Team. Is that still an issue? I haven't heard anything definitive that it's not. I doubt it ever will be not a problem at all. Right. Um, because once a species invades, um, it's almost impossible to get rid of them. Uh, so, so they are still, I know that in some of the surveying groups like Reef Check California, mm -hmm. uh, they're still on the list of species to look out for and sure. you definitely want to record those if you see them. So what do we got here? Dungeness it looks like? Yeah, it's a little, a little rock crab. Noah, he's the marine lab manager, he, he goes down with our uh, flexing permit and sets out some, some crab nets every once in a while. And then we have a, a, a variety of other invertebrates um, down on this, on this rack. Uh, these are oftentimes the, the animals that we take out to the mobile touch tanks for our outreach events at schools. Sure. So we've got uh, you know, our warty sea cucumbers. Uh, these are, are basically our cleanup crew. Um, we got purple urchins, red urchins, giant keyhole limpets, uh, wavy turban snails. I know Concordia does a lot of outreach with uh, like local events and they bring the touch tanks to sort of bring awareness for conservation and you know, marine biology to young kids. Um, but I've always kind of wondered, like, how do these animals hold up to being touched and moved? And, like, what do you guys do to, I guess, sort of prevent that? How do you choose the type of animals, you know, that yeah. come to play? So a lot of that comes with the selection of what animals we take. Um, so we take only invertebrates, um, and we take invertebrates that tend to hold up pretty well. So things like sea stars and urchins and snails tend to do really well in those situations. Uh, things that are a little more sensitive are things like sea hares and sea cucumbers, so we have to be a little bit more cautious with those. Um, but for instance, our, our sea stars have been used for the last two and a half years with this little uh -huh. touch tank program, and, and they're still trucking right along. Up top, we've got uh, this is kind of just a holding tank. We've got some uh, pismo clams, so one of the other research projects we do here. Is, uh, is surveying the population of pismo clams in Orange County. We're trying different tagging materials, uh, putting metal tags onto the clams, to, and ultimately, once we work out the methodology, plant them back out on the beach and be able to detect them when we go back with a metal detector. This is our life support. Life this is our life support. Yeah, the fun <laughs> stuff. It's all custom built. So what we do here, we have a, we have a main pump, is a one horsepower pump that's uh, sort of hidden in the back there. Uh, it circulates our water through our UV sterilizers. So we've got eight tubes in line. Um, I believe those are each 55 watt UV sterilizers, uh, and then from there it runs down into our chiller, one horsepower chiller, uh, up through a check valve to present backflow or siphoning from our tanks, sure. and then back up to the tanks. We run our system here at about 16 or 17 degrees Celsius, which is about 60 to 62, 63 degrees Fahrenheit. Everything is gravity fed back down to the sump. We've got bags of activated carbon filter media. We have uh, ceramic, you know, high surface area, biological filtration media. We've got a, a real a real basic mechanical filter. Our main filtration is done by our gigantic protein skimmer. So 
This one doesn't fit in the sump, like most of the yeah, yeah. This one is built by R, uh, RK2 Systems in San Diego and yeah. is, uh, is running all the time on a subset of our water and actually dumps into a trickle filter uh, that also has bio balls in it. What's this one right here? So this is our water level indicator. Okay. And it's, it's the water levels you can see it peeking out from behind. Sure, for our home aquarius, why is it important to use unions and valves? It's important because you will inevitably need to replace a part right. of your plumbing or you'll have a leak and you want to isolate it. Uh, and being able to take apart a, a piece of equipment and swap out a piece of equipment for another one without having to cut all your plumbing redo. and redo it completely is, is really, really good. So always use unions. Always use unions. unions. I hope you enjoyed that first-hand look inside of a real working marine research lab. For a fish fanatic like me, these kind of experiences are certainly something special. Be sure to stick around because we have some great plans in store for the team over at Concordia University, including a couple of tank builds as well as some field research trips. I want to send a special thank you to Noah and Sean at Concordia University for all of their hard work, as well as I want to thank you guys for supporting our efforts in creating fun and entertaining videos just like this, because without all of you, we couldn't do what we do here at MarineDepot.com. Until next time, take care and happy reef keeping.